Okay, okay. Are going. then we'll, all right. I'm going to call this meeting to order at 5 o'clock, October 27th, 2022. I'll ask uh, Brother Paul Stratton to lead us in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I come before you to ask you to bless this body of people that have come together for the betterment of our community. Guide us in one heart, one mind, and one accord to follow your lead in peace and endeavors that suits you and the people. Be with them as your servants. In your Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Okay, um, before we have... Uh, David, come up. Does anybody have anything visitor-wise that they would like to bring to the table? Um, Anybody have any discussion before our engineer comes up to tell us an update on our project that we have to play? Okay. With that said, David, you got the floor. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Moore, Council. It's good good to be before you. It's been a while since we've been here doing business in Hartford. Unfortunately, part of that was just COVID-related, and it's just it's been a while since we've had an active project uh, to, to come bring before you. So this evening, I want to talk with you about uh, the multi-use trail, uh, which is a TAP grant project. TAP is uh, Transfer- Transportation Alternatives Program. It is an 80-20 matching grant program through Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Office of Local Programs. You have used this funding source in at least three previous projects that, that we were the design engineers for. Uh, it's a good funding source. Like I said, 80-20 matching grant is, is very good, uh, a very good package for you that the city would only be responsible for 20% of the funds of the project. Um, we submitted this project grant application last August of 2021. It has taken up until this week uh, to have both the the funds awarded and then permission to hire uh, a design engineer for it. So we'll be presenting you with a contract next week uh, in line with what the, the budget that had been uh, installed previously in the grant application. The walking trail is going to begin uh, at Wayland Alexander Elementary School at the end of the trail that's already there. It'll cross uh, Highway 69 by means of a bridge over that road and then we'll run along the south side of 69 all the way up to the county park and turn into the county park. So you would have connectivity then from the park all the way to the elementary school. Of course there's already a walking trail or sidewalk system from there to Ellis Park, run down Oakwood. You can get downtown from there, and then, if I'm not mistaken, you're already connected to River Trail Park. From no. Down to, no, there's a gap there, isn't there? Okay, so that's that's the only remaining piece going from the park here all the way to River Trail Park. There would just be the one from, from uh, the edge of, um, is it Union? Union. Yeah. At one point, that stretch was in the transportation cabinets to be updated, and I think they cut it, but it was, I, I think the yeah, the concept was when they did that, it was going to be built a sidewalk there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's, I'm glad you refreshed my memory. We had asked them to include that in the roadway widening project, so that would be done by the state, and you wouldn't have to pay for it. Uh, we'll have to check and see if that's still in the plan. You, you're probably right that it got next, but... Uh, anyway, we're we're excited about this project. We've been excited about the project for a while, and unfortunately, it is it is sad and sad and sad. But it's ready to to move forward. And it's one of those things too that he said it's going to take time, so this ain't going to be built overnight. But uh, we're excited, and we look forward to working with you on this project. Um, any anything that we have that updates, I will make sure all the council members and the public at large is included on these project as we're pursuing these projects. <coughs> Um, I think it's very important to our citizens and our council to know of what we're doing in, within the city. So thank you for um, doing that. And um, we'll ha- we're having a conference call tomorrow with Holly, and she's in Frankfurt. Mm-hmm. So we're going to try to have an uh, informational discussion with her tomorrow. And uh, I will bring y'all updates of what we have during all that. Just curious, um, where the city limits stop on the other side of the parkway? Are you? Are, what about the county side of things? How so I've got to talk to the judge tomorrow, and that's what me and him was just discussing. 
far as a financial standpoint, they was going to put that amount of money towards it, and I'm going to have that discussion with him tomorrow and see where we stand on this with the county's aspect of it. So, and this is here for y'all to look at, even the citizens. Um, anybody can look at this project. Um, do y'all have any questions for David? Okay. Uh, the bridge going across 69, would that be stairs or would it be handicap accessible or like a ramp? Well, on the elementary school side, it's, it's at grade already. And then that's, that's high and it comes over high. And then you're right, it needs to get back down to grade. And that would, um, that would be brought down in a way that is handicap right. accessible. It would have to be ramped down. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a detail that would have to be worked out. But yes, it needs to come down. Right. The trail is going to be ADA accessible. Uh, as would that be trying. And that's that was the in the design of things. Are you yes. talking about one so. of the like with the chain link fence that rusts and looks a little <laughs> rough over here? <laughs> or are we talking about something different? You're on it. You're on yeah. it. I, I appreciate it. Um, no, and that, and that that comes up. What we had shown in the grant application was a weathering steel bridge. Okay, and weathering steel bridge just to get a little bit in the weeds on it does have a, a rusting finish to it. it. It's intentional. It's a special uh, alloy of steel that is designed to rust to a certain depth and then that acts as a protection to the to the structure. It doesn't have to be painted and repainted uh, over the life of it. Okay, so there are there are pros and cons to it over the life of the bridge as if you're going to compare it to a painted steel bridge which a painted steel bridge is going to give you a very clean look. Absolutely. And you can pick the color or you can uh, do whatever you want in that way. But then over time, that paint is going to get nicked. You're going to have to come and, and you know, touch up. You're going to, have, at some point, have to repaint it. And that, that's a pretty significant expense that probably no council is ever going to want to say, yeah, let's right. spend the tens of thousands of dollars it takes to repaint it. So that's something that would have to be decided, yes. But with this being as visible as it is from the road, that may be... You, you may have a preference to go with the painted steel. Uh, there's a cost aspect to it, and we would 100% defer to what the wishes of the city are because as far as we're concerned, we need to make sure that it functions. Um, but if you have a preference as to look, we would definitely defer to the, the city's wishes on that. I mean, that's, that's most people's first hurrah into town, so just keep that yeah. in mind. You're right. Well, once these phases get there, we can discuss this as we go, and we'll include the councils on on that aspect. Once the, once we get that motion going, where we're going to say, okay, is this here's what we got? Do we want to go that route? Because we got plenty of time to set on this project, so it's nothing that has to be decided tonight. Absolutely. So first step is we'll we'll you know like I said we'll present you with a contract. We'll, right. We'll get under under contract for design work. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with. Uh, uh, survey of the, of the site we'll have a geotechnical investigation because the bridge foundations are going to be critical so right. we didn't know, know what's underground those will be the first steps right um, well david i appreciate you coming down and discussing all this with us and um i look forward to this project and i i'll see you tomorrow on the well i'll see you on zoom yeah see you on zoom so um thanks for coming down and if y'all have any questions for him uh, he's left his cards. Feel free to reach out to him if you want to talk to him on any issues that you might have with this project. We're all in this together. So, I have a question, if you don't mind. The uh, rust aspect you said you said you said it uh, rusts a certain depth. Is this the kind of rust that would flake or anything? Because you're looking at maybe cutting, and getting tetanus with somebody or no? It does not. It's a special alloy of, of steel. Uh, trade name that's been used a lot in the past is Corten. You may have heard of Corten steel, maybe not the the more. So that's like a the brand name Kleenex, right? But but tissue name, the more generic name is Weathering Steel, and it's a particular alloy of steel. It's not the flaking kind of steel that was on my grandpa's old you know basketball goal post that would just you peel it off. It's not it's not like that. Um, I believe the Barclays Center, which is a, in, in Brooklyn, where the Brooklyn Nets play basketball, I believe they used it. Uh, one, of the, one of the headlines at that point was that 
it's stained the concrete sidewalk below it at the installation. So like when you put it in and it gets rained on the first few times, you'll see some of that staining. Uh, but over the long haul, like once that initial first few rains and you know season comes and goes, it doesn't it doesn't do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, we've used this sort of bridge in the past uh, in different settings. Uh, it, it, it it looks really good over uh, in a wooded area and you know over a river. It it just right. fits. You know it looks good. It performs over. It's going to be something you need to talk about here. How you yep. how you want this bridge Most to definitely. look here? Thank you. I right, appreciate it. So, thank you. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. Safe travels back home, buddy. All right. So here's we're gonna we're gonna have to do this individually. I'll have to have a, a a motion and a second to approve the special called meeting for September fifteenth, twenty twenty two. I make a motion. We have a meeting September 15th. Okay. I second. All right. All in favor say aye. Hold on. Aye. What do you want? Basically, we're, yeah, the minutes. Okay. We'll thought, have to individually do those. I thought you were setting the new date. And I'm no, like, no, no, we've no, already no. gone through September. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're just approving the minutes for. Meeting. We're approving all these special call meetings that we had. Gotcha. So we got to. So, yeah. You got the first and second on that? <coughs> oh, baby, said I. Okay, now we're on the special called meeting October the 6th, 2022. I make a motion to accept the minutes from the special call meeting on October 6th, 2022. I second. I have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, the minutes for the special called meeting October the 10th, 2022. I need a motion and a second. To approve the minutes is read. I'll make a motion. A second. second. First and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Tara, do you have anything to bring to light? Nothing for open meeting. Okay. Before you, I'll give you time to look at the finance reports, statements, income, and accounts, and then I'll ask for a motion in a second to approve the the financial reports as read. Make a motion we accept the financial reports as presented. Got a second. Got a first and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Hold like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we don't have no old business. We'll go down to the um, new business. I need a motion to uh, accept the council meetings for the November meeting and December meeting, which would be November the 17th, and the other one being December the 9th. So I'll need a motion to... Uh, I'll make a motion we accept those dates. I'll second. I have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right, uh, Jeff, I'm going to... First, I'm going to do some uh, pointing to this code enforcement board. Uh, we have some open seats, and I would like to bring these names up individually. And then you can have the floor, Jeff, if you will. If, the, if that's what you want to do. If it, yeah, I can. I... Yeah, I'd like you to. Okay. Um, first name I'll bring up is Shane Vincent. And these are two-year terms, is that correct? Mm -hmm. I put Shane Vincent's name up for this board. Um, Jimmy Cantrell. Well, we need to vote individually, don't we, Tara? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but if there, are they staggered terms or are they... Um, yeah, they were staggered on that sheet that I have. Well, just just no, let's just do them. two yeah. years. I'll just introduce them how you got them. Okay. You actually fill in alternates. Well, there's one that's no longer on there anymore. Right, that first that one. That one, and then there was, there was three mm -hmm. that we was going to put, and then I'm going to add him as the council side of it. No, not on the board. Can't say it on the board? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so then I'll just, um, well then, 
Shane Vincent, Jimmy Cantrell, and Officer York back there. Okay. Uh, you can't be an employee. Can't be an employee either. Killing me, Smalls. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'll put, uh, if he will, I'll put Paul Stratton on this uh, com committee as well, if he'll be okay with that. So I'll, I'll put those three names up. I'll ask um, Jeff to have a meeting probably next month with this to get these, uh, look at all the policies and retweak of what we want to go through and bring it to the next council meeting probably after the holidays because it's going to be a short meeting november and december meetings so maybe after the holidays okay. um we can get these meetings sure. together so you still have those ordinances i do and i was going to ask though can we get some each one of these printed out for yeah and that'd be important to these and that way we can revise what we want to revise and if we want to stiffen the fines y'all meet see what y'all come up with sure so okay. thank you with that being said um i'm gonna have let jeff have the floor for a little bit well, hold up do you want to get those approved oh sorry thank you okay so do i have uh, a motion to accept these new board members to the code enforcement side i make a motion we accept those a second i have a first and second all in favor say aye aye and then okay. what we usually do lisa if you remember we'll have an order that he can sign you have that, I think. Last um, time. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've got it in my office as well. Okay. Sure. So, as you guys know, we uh, we did the, the city did their uh, uh, fall cleanup. So, uh, pretty much was out and locked this at the beginning of the month, supporting that, advertising that, leaving uh, some red door tags on some of our uh, frequent. You know, flowers, that flower, I guess. <laughs> but uh, other than that, we pretty much had some uh, high grass issues in ditches and, and along the roadways and stuff like that. As of this morning, uh, all those have been taken care of. Uh, the last one was in our neighborhood there, and uh, he finally uh, get that done this week. Uh, so, and there also, there's some, I guess maybe some people has put out some large some mattresses, some TVs and things like that. Uh, I don't know if they missed the deadline for the uh, spring cleanup. But That's something that if you give me a list, we'll go look at it. I mean, I don't know when this went. I don't know when they got done, but sure enough, we want to get it cleaned up. If they yeah. set it out. Uh... Well, there's a couple on Kirk Street, and then there's at, at the trailer park down there. I guess these trailers <laughs> they put all their trash out in kind of that parking lot up close to your house. Yeah. You know, and, and the trash is picked up at the mattress was left. All right. Uh, I'll uh, was it? it was mine. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. Didn't get away. <laughs> but pretty much uh, right now, everybody's uh, pretty well in line with the ordinances that we have. Uh, there's hasn't been any uh, people, any residents, uh, really. You know, well, I appreciate your. I appreciate what you do, and. Um, I do too, and it needs. There's nothing in the ordinance about tents. Where's that? It's on uh, Washington down here. There's some tents in, in behind the house, in the residence house, home. Uh, oh, Mark. I don't know if they're living there. I don't know. Uh, Have you I've seen it, Roger, at all? I know some tents down there a while back. Well, you do a welfare check on them sometime along the way and just see what's up with that and yeah. see... Just see where we're at and just do yeah, a welfare the, check. Charles Jones is the, is the resident owner. Yeah. Uh, just see what's going on there. It's on the corner. You go straight down Washington Street. It's, it's yeah. right there on the corner of Washington and Mulberry. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then, then they're in the, kind of in the backyard, but it's a corner lot there. You can, you can see them from the road. Uh, I went by there a couple of times. There's no trash or anything like okay. that, you know, piled out or nothing like that. Right. So, uh, there's really nothing in the ordinance, okay. city ordinance, but for tents. Well, I appreciate everything that you put into it. So, well, Thursday. Yeah, it is. I'll go get it. 
Okay, well, she, she's going to get a notice in the mail. Because yeah. huh? I've been watching it as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, Are you yeah. killing me? Okay. So, right, it's nice. been an ongoing. Yes, it has, yes. <laughs> So um, I guess I will give you the information on on the new members, sure. and I'll I'll try to get emails for everybody, and then you I think can. I, I pretty much. Uh, yeah, I, well, of course, I already have Paul's. And then uh, Jimmy Cantrell, he's uh, he's our new arch coordinator for the county. Okay. He lives in Hartford here. Um, I'll get you all of his yeah, okay. information too. He, he may be a. Good person to ask about whatever you find out about your folks living in tents. Yeah, and that's a good contact information along the way, too, okay. in case you run into something like that as well. So, okay. Well, thank you for everything that you do. Thank what you. About, uh, at Camper, we've been there from remove. I've seen that on the Maybe list. We were just you were sitting right here. <laughs> so. So that's something that me and hers talked about, and I don't know if you did. You bring him I up. Just got so him up we're going to gonna try to. Yeah. Well, I didn't. We're going to try to get that yeah. process going pretty quick along the way. Yeah. Um, have you talked to her? I have. She called me this week. Okay, yeah. then we'll take care of that aspect yeah. of it. So. <laughs> we're good. Let's hope. We're good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. All right. So I've got a project that we've, it's a sidewalk repair right out here in front of the PD. Basically it's cracked up and it's a trip hazard in my opinion. Y'all can go out there and look at it if you want. Um, got a bid from Monroe's uh, Concrete Service or a construction company and it's at $3,050 and that's basically taking the existing concrete and Jason's bunch is tearing it all out. So. We're doing all the demolition side. This is just concrete, and concrete's really expensive this time. So you're doing it right here on the corner? Basically, from, from this half of it in front of the PD would be all redone. Are you making it ADA? That's something that we're going to have to discuss with uh, you Chris. It, you have to, yeah. And, and that's what we're going to have to do. Okay. So I'm going to have to see if we go along with this. He's going to have to do that. So, um, I'll give y'all time to look at it, and if y'all want to go, if you want to table this, whatever y'all want to do, I think you need to move on it because somebody and, like me and we'll just make sure that it's ADA. Break a leg and um, going up. Yeah, so lock them in a bed. Ask him because what you're probably looking at him to do is change your grade and, and put a ramp there. Right, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it needs to be done. Yeah, um, most definitely needs I to be done. The same thing. They want to add a step yeah. there. So, yeah, it's up to you. Do you, you need all. a motion? Well, um, motion to accept the bid. Yeah, I mean, that's up to you all. If we can keep it in this ballpark with the ADA approved of the ramp, yes. Um, if not, we'll have to regroup on the price and table it till the next meeting. Okay, I make a motion to accept the bid from Monroe for no the concrete second. work. I have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion second. carries. Tony seconded. Tony. And that's contingent, that motion on making sure it's And that's compliant. make sure that's in compliance. And if it's not, then we will table it till the next meeting and regroup on the price. All right, thank you. Okay, so Mary Bell, I'm going to have you read this ordinance on the first reading of the uh, length of service awards uh -huh. and I'll open it for discussion. City of Hartford, Kentucky Ordinance Number 2022-04 An Ordinance Amending Ordinance 2018-09 to reflect an increase in the length of service awards for city workers working zero to five years from $75 to $200. So basically this was an ordinance that's been passed and at the end of each year this kind of gives them, we, we can't give bonuses in government and this is just a longevity award for the most part and I would like to see if we can increase that 
to the two hundred dollars but it's open for discussion i think these all the employees are worthy enough of of getting this at the at the christmas holiday seasons so that's just my opinion so if y'all if y'all are in favor for the first reading of the ordinance i'll um i'll ask for a motion in a second you don't have two on the first you don't have you don't have two on a first reading okay so this will be at the november meeting for a second reading but if you want any changes or anything between now and then that's by the part of your discussion right get there. Mm-hmm. okay so all right well we don't have to have a motion on that so so that's something that we'll discuss in the november meeting to try to get that ball rolling okay chris i'm going to bring you up this is a um so what we have here and he's going to help me go through this because he's my water man so basically, we're going to change the order to the, on Gillespie Street, and this is just a, asking the council to approve. Basically, we have an 8-inch line yes. running on Clay Street. Yes. We've had it for 15 years, and it's been up for discussion, and it's never got turned over to that 8-inch line. We're on a 6-inch now. A 4-inch. A 4-inch line. So when this has been here for 15 years, and this line hasn't been in use. So in, in order on this Gillespie Street project. Um, I would like that motion to carry to change the order and add the Clay Street project to the Gillespie Street as been ordered. And that total is $45,375. With that being said, at the the amount that we're going now on both projects to get awarded, we're only going to be out seventy five thousand four hundred seventy one dollars, yeah. and that's from Senate Bill thirty six money, and that was um, Senate Bill thirty six money. We we're getting one hundred ninety four thousand eight hundred twenty dollars. So, in my vision, I think it's only best interest if we go on and get this eight inch main switched over because we've had so many leaks on clay street Mm -hmm. and we need to move on this project and it also benefits the gillespie street project absolutely because because that's going to be an eight inch line as well running through so and it would also be able to shut the line load line off going down Gillespie. so that that is one issue that it'll get all those houses and we won't have that issue again just give you better fire protection there too yes yes so we need a motion. For uh, this. I, I'll need a motion to add, change the change order, order to change the order, I and add Clay to, Street to the yeah. Gillespie Street repair. I make that motion to change the order to add Clay Street to the Gillespie Street project. I'll second. I have a first and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. You mean that line's been there all that time? <laughs> Is it still good? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You were here when yeah. they put it in, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not that old. I'm like, sorry. I thought they were. I, I thought they said you had to move. Oh, so man. To <laughs> so do I need to ask. So all this digging y'all been doing right there in front of Jerry's house? Yeah, uh, we've actually been trying to uh, find the valves to shut the lines going down Gillespie Street, and we haven't had any uh, luck finding any valves. So with this being done... We can actually put some new bales in on the 8 inch line and be able to shut this off. Amen. Wonderful. So uh, that's that's moving in the right direction. Oh yeah. I mean, it's just needing to it be done. It certainly is. So, all right. Thank you. Um, with with the addition to that, Chris has got something that he would like to discuss with everybody on the council. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. And here's what oh. you want to look at. Thank you, sir. Okay, at the last uh, inspection that we had from the Division of Water, uh, they actually noticed that we have actually have a turbidity meter, which measures the amount of the particles that's in the water. 
And that's what bacteria and anything can uh, bond to or get out to the system. We have to, by law, I've, I've actually checked with the Division of Water today. I talked to their inspectors. They said that if uh, we have to keep it monitored constantly, there, there's no way around it. If we don't have it monitored, we actually can get fined yeah. per day. I think, I think it's up to $25,000 per day. Yeah, well, sounds like they do. <laughs> well, we've actually uh, had three turbidity meters, one on each filter that was rehabbed back in 2017. Well, the, 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 the turbidity meters never was rehabbed back then. Some of them is as old as the plant, and the parts are obsolete, and there's only one company that even, even sells them. As old as me and both. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we've actually, <laughs> if you look at your yeah. pictures, this is actually the filter one is the actual turbidity meter that's actually going out right now. It has a status light going on, uh, blinking on it. The state says if we, we have 14 days to fix it from the day it goes out. Oh dear. And it <laughs> takes eight to 10 weeks to get one if we order one today. And that can be fine daily. Yeah, we can be fine daily. Yeah, what now? What would the state expect you to do in the meantime? Uh, we have to manually go out there every four hours and take samples and, and run them manually. Where does this come from? Uh, from the hot company. That's where we buy all of our supplies for our lab testing. And It takes that long to build it or they don't have them made? Or what? Uh, probably a lot of them don't have them made. A lot of everything right now with the COVID and everything, there's a lot of shortage, especially with computer chips and hardware, so it's harder to get stuff. It's just like even our uh, water line supplies, our clamps, our brass, water meters. We, we actually just got word from Ferguson where we order them now. It's going to be up well over a year now from whenever we make an order before we receive them. Jeez. So and this, everything is getting harder and harder to get. And in the water aspect of things, I will tell the council, there's nothing cheap about it. No. Um, there, some of these things that we're trying to bring to light now, we should have already done. Yeah. In my opinion, that's my that personal with opinion. the 15-inch line. Yes. Yeah. This actually should have been done when the filters was rehabbed. Yeah. Uh, now, the older system, like this right here, it's, a, it's an older system. It uses a photo cell eye and mirrors and a light and a light bulb to actually monitor the water. That's how old they are. You can actually turn to one page uh, and you'll see it and it shows this is the eye within the turbidity meter and the glass is crackling in it. Right. Oh. There. Well, Chris, can I drink water tonight or no? Yes, it's still safe to drink. <laughs> so. I just don't take a bath. Don't take a bath. <laughs> But from what we have done, we have contacted Hawk, and we have talked over with them, and it's a very expensive repair. So we've talked it over with them, and they've got a three-year program that we can get onto where we can purchase them over three years where it's not such a hard hit at one time. Which, with this being said, we would have to replace all three of the turbidity meters and the one that we manually read that's in the lab. It's our desktop unit because the newer ones don't use the photo, so it uses lasers. Yeah. So it, you don't want to have them having two different kinds of readings because then it shows the state that there's something up. Yeah. So it's a total of four you could use. Yeah. Uh, well, technically it'll be five pieces. Okay. That was And that um, y'all got it right here. So. Seventy-seven, seventy-five. Yeah. So that total is yeah. seventy-seven thousand. And it breaks 000. it down. We can pay it. Uh, but that's only budgeted. 18 you can pay years, it monthly, right? quarterly, yeah. or annually over the years, over the three years. And these, oh, okay. So if we sign across, we're locked, so, locked into these fees. Yes. This is going to be, let's just get this an open discussion mm -hmm. form. Um, we can assess, we can look at this, or however y'all want to do this. Do y'all want to? Approach this as 
payments of three years? Do you want to table this to the next? Whatever. What is y'all's? I'm open for. Well, I don't think we need to move. I don't think we need to table it. Okay. I think we need to move on it. Okay. Do it's you like all? Else. Okay. Do you all? Right. Thank you. What's the savings if you were to just buy it outright? Yeah. Uh, if you buy it outright, uh, you, you would say that we were honestly you'd be about the same price. <clears throat> But on this program right here, there's also a three-year contract where they'll come in, they'll service all equipment. If anything breaks, it's fully re replaced. So in that three yes. three years, so if so, basically, we'd be better off doing the three years yes. than pay, paying it all out. Yes, because you're buying okay. it plus the maintenance plan. Yes. Plus the maintenance plan as well. So I. And also, I think that would be good. they also come in quarterly, which we have all of our equipment quarterly calibrated. Right. Yeah. We have to do that by law. Right. Uh, right now, we're paying a, a place out of Nashville called Electronics quarterly to do that. Uh, they will actually come in and, in this package, even calibrate all this for us to save a little more money. Well, if we're in favor of doing the three-year payment plan with the service on top of that, um, I'll ask for a motion to accept the three-year payment plan on this project. Josh, do you have anything to add to this project? Just want, you, know, you, know, uh, you know, in that program, it also comes with software yes. to where we can monitor those filters. And we can monitor it even if we're out here reading water meters, fixing yeah. a water leak. We know exactly what that plant's doing, okay. what it's producing. Well, I think it's that's the more technology it's savvy software that, we need to be too, at, that so. comes with it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Time. All right, thank you. I make a motion we accept the three year contract. And the first and payment would be at the $18,475. What do you pay monthly cents. or quarterly or annually? Which way are y'all doing it? Uh, well, that's a good I question. Do you want to do why that? Why don't we do it annually? Why don't we have it? I so mean, is that is that how I read that, that Lisa? Well, you got. How you read it? We got three yeah. years. Yeah. Monthly, quarterly, or annually? Yeah. So, however y'all want to do that. Uh, it's really up to us. Okay. It's whatever uh, helps us out the most. I mean, I just think she knows what the balance is. Yeah. Is. Yeah. yeah. It's more like this. So, do it annual? annually feasible? So that would be the. That'd be the 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So we're going to do that on the annual fee of 18,475. For the first one, yeah. And it reduces. And then, it, yes. Yes. Until your buyout. Yep. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. I, do I have a motion? I made a motion. A second. second. Got a second. And Jerry seconded it too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, take your so, pick. So I'll throw <laughs> it in favor of it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All in favor. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you, Chris. Thank that you, was a good Chris. presentation. That puts it in black and white for us folks that don't know water. Isn't that right? <laughs> Just tell me what's about. So thank you. Um get rid of your light bulbs. Mr. Mayor, yes. if I may. I was I will admit to being a very skeptical person of the city's work there at Iron Mountain and the graveyard when I first drove by, but I think everything went real smooth and, and uh, yes, um, they did a good job putting it back together. So yeah, um, yeah. very complimentary yeah, to our city uh, workers. Our maintenance done a very good job, mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to and roll with that. I would like to talk about uh, Voices of Oakwood a little bit. I think that was a very good little uh, thing that we did for the city um, so Meredith's on vacation but I see good things happening and I'm very thankful for I that as well. I hear a good, good word about the, the skating rink. Yeah, people are excited. I, get, yeah. I hear a lot of people Yeah, it's going to be that, good. That so um, Can't wait to see it and come up and watch. Are people. you going to skate? Who, me? I'll skate with you, Mary <laughs> I do want to stand up. <laughs> Is it roller skate or ice skate? Ice. So yeah. How that was pretty good, and that's one of the things too. The ditching, we're doing a lot of ditch work. <laughs> More than that, though. Um, <laughs> but if they start fish, I don't know. Start fish, yeah, too. Yeah, have EMS on standby. Yeah. Okay. With that being said, I'll I'll open it for the council. Does anybody have anything to bring to light? How did the fall festival go? The fire department was. 
Were they pleased? I think I think they was okay with the attendance, um, and that's one of the things that we're going to regroup with Meredith on um, as a city aspect. Uh, we're going to include the fire department on it, but we're going to try to get the city's involvement more. As started saying. And, uh, you know, if the fire department wants to have certain areas, we're going to let them yeah. design yeah. wherever yeah. they want That's to make right. their money at. Because we want to include our fire department. They're really good at fundraising, and so... Um, that's just one of the things that we might okay. look at for next year. All right. Jerry, you got anything? Well, the date on it, everybody was on fall break, too. There's a lot of people that was gone that otherwise would have been here. Well, that's one of the things that me and Tara and Meredith and Mayor Sanifer and uh, Oceda, we're all going to try to get together and get a event plan together. We got one. Good. Do you want to hear about it? Yes. Yeah. Let's. I'll go. So we actually through Oceda, we we pitched this, and we are in the process. We've got a group of uh, local business owners who came, and Oceda is going to sponsor it. We're going to put together a publication for residents and tourists alike to come to the county. And that's that's one of the things um that we can piggyback off of community events citywide exactly countywide yes. even around the region so, so we're going to have a basically a feature in it where it's going to be a community calendar it's going to be like a quarterly thing and it talks about different things going on that way people instead of having to look on facebook or listen to the radio and nobody knowing what's going on until it's passed it's all going to kind of be in one spot so be looking for, we're hoping to get that out um You were all the ones that were wanting to do it about December 15th. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm waiting for Dustin to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> because I think originally it was October 15th. So, uh, <laughs> that, was a, that was a Sherilyn Tishner Ward yeah. project. This perspective. <laughs> but we're, uh, at, at this point, I actually talked with, with some folks today about getting, about meeting and, and figuring out a printing thing. Because right. it's just a matter of, but you it, know, when you're printing, when you're printing as many as you might need to print that really kind so of So you're including the Bill Monroe festivities we're, we're gonna, and the whole works? We're going to include anything. The, the first couple of um, publications, or at least the first issue, the uh, Economic Development IDA, the Industrial Development, has agreed to help. And then we will have to sell ads, obviously, to keep it going. So if you are a business or you're somebody that you think you want some information out there, we're going to try and keep them reasonable. But keep in mind, that we're talking about something that's going to have pretty wide reach. Yeah. Too. So we're. And if you know people that are running events. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's it's good to reach out to these resources. Yeah. Because when we're planning for anything, like my job at the park, I mean, it's important that we know everything that's going on. Beaver Dam, Rosine. It, you just got to make sure that we're, everybody's on the same calendar, yeah. not double booking there's, something. There's been, there's been Four community events happening on one side. Oh yes, yes, yes absolutely, exactly. and that's that's important to us. So, and, it's good to be and so most of them right. are fundraising events for those communities or whatever they're at. You know, and that's what I that's why I I think it's important for our fire departments um, fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, I want to gear a little bit for for the citizens to have something free of charge to come to that's that's dear to my heart to have that set up and i'm not i'm not saying that we're going to always be able to do that but it's important to me so all right anybody else got anything all right with that being said i'd like to call this meeting adjourned i make a motion to adjourn. second it i have a first and a second all in favor say aye aye uh, Motion carries. Thank you all for showing up. Roger, thanks for being here. Appreciate everybody coming out.